people are running surgeon right here. And oh my god, I've been having so many issues with this stupid like loom screen recording thing. But anyways, apparently like you, you can just clear your browsing history. That's what happened with me. So you know if you have issues with stuff, you know, it's not working, clear your browsing history. Refresh refresh the page and do it again. It'll work. That's just what happened with me. It's weird. But anyways, um, here we are, as we rush up part five. I think this is the last episode because the next one that I saw was about the Russian Revolution, which is way later. We can always look at that. That's definitely part of Russian history, big part of it. But after all of this, I'm probably going to go to the Suez Crisis, something that y'all have suggested. And it seems interesting, you know? So, without further ado, let's get started. 1881, Russian Emperor Alexander II was assassinated by left-wing terrorists in... Oh yeah, I said that, oh my gosh. St. Petersburg. Today, the place where he was fatally wounded is marked by the magnificent Church of the Saviour. Wow, look at that, that is amazing. ...on spilled blood. Alexander II had been a reformer Hailed as the liberator for freeing Russia's serfs. Yeah, like, I already commented on this, but what the heck? Why would they kill him? What did they expect to happen? Like, what, what, what possibly did they think would come out of that? But his son and successor, Alexander III, believed his father's reforms had unleashed dangerous forces within Russia that ultimately led to his death. As emperor, he publicly vowed to reassert autocratic rule. Whoa, look at that. Oh, never mind. I don't even know why I said that. Declaring that, in the midst of our great grief, the voice of God orders us to undertake courageously the task of ruling with faith in the strength and rightness of autocratic power. The Tsar's secret police, the so-called Okranka, was ordered to infiltrate Russia's many revolutionary groups. Those found guilty of plotting against the government were hanged or sent into internal exile in Siberia. Alexander III was a pious man who supported the Orthodox Church and the assertion of a strong Russian national identity. Russia's Jews became victims of this policy. They'd already been targeted in murderous race riots known as pogroms after false rumors were spread that they were responsible for the assassination of the emperor. Now the government expelled 20,000 Jews from Moscow and many who could began to leave the country. Over the next 40 years... Oh, great. My cat wants to freaking go in again. He's been in and out like five different times. It's today. It's so annoying. Last time, he just bit me and ran away. You know, he even hear him. Around 2 million Jews would leave Russia. Most. 2 million? Dang. Bound for the USA. Hmm. Concerned by the growing... Good old USA. There isn't going to be that many Jews in the United States, and like, like with ethnicity and religion. Like, even though you know so many Jews fled from Europe whenever Germany um, took over in World War Two, and you know two million fled from Russia, but it, it seems like the Jewish um, culture is like really small for some reason. Power of Germany. Russia signed an alliance with France, both sides promising military aid if the other oh was gosh. attacked. And my love, this is a secret alliance. So yeah. Also, it's so dumb. Freaking Bill on the second, that donkey. Um, Bismarck, he was trying to make good friends with Russia, you know what I mean? They were, they were trying to be close pals. But then... A bunch of things happened because first of all, Bill the Second didn't really care. He 
like, I guess he didn't really care about having a relationship with Russia. He was all, you know, he, he was a lot more, like, assertive, I guess. And that annoyed everyone. Um, and also, Russia and Britain, they, they solved their disputes in the Middle East. So that really helped them build a relationship. And, yeah. Sergei Vita was appointed Russia's new Minister of Finance. His reforms helped to modernize the Russian economy and encourage foreign... I've never talked about the Russia-Japanese war. ...for an investment, particularly from its new ally, France. French loans helped Russia to develop its industry and infrastructure. Work began on the Trans-Siberian Railway. Completed in 1916, it remains the world's longest oh. railway line, yeah. running 5,772 oh, miles. From wow. Moscow to Vladivostok. Wow. Alexander III was succeeded by his son, Nicholas, Nicholas II. Yeah. His coronation was marred by tragedy when 1,400 people were crushed to death at Everyone. an open-air celebration in Moscow. China granted oh, Russia oh. the right to build a new... Wait, you can't just say something like that. Why were they crushed to death? That's a lot of people. Jesus Christ. Naval base at Port Arthur. Oh, that's what's Granted to Russia the right to build a naval base at Port Arthur. Talk about it when China faced a major revolt oh, known as the Boxer so. Rebellion, Russia moved troops into Manchuria under the pretext of defending Port Arthur from the rebels. This mm. Yeah, we're just gonna Yeah guys, we're just gonna take out this like massive chunk of your land to protect just this tiny little port like brought Russia into conflict with Japan. Oh here what? it is, okay, here it is. So had designs over Manchuria and Korea. The Japanese made a surprise attack on Port Arthur, then defeated the Russian army. The giant Battle of Mukden. Yeah. Russia's Baltic fleet, meanwhile, had sailed halfway around the world to reach the Pacific, where it was immediately annihilated at the Battle of Tsushima. Well, that must suck. Oh, look at this. Look how much they travel. They have to travel all the way through here. From, like, all around Africa. Where it was immediately annihilated. At the battle of oh, and it immediately matched whatever what I said. What? There's all all that work, and they're just annihilated. It's like wow. Of Tsushima. That just must suck. Honestly, Russia was left with no option but to sign a humiliating peace, brokered by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. Meanwhile. The Tsar faced another crisis, much closer to home. Oh no. In There's also going to be like some kind of Polish rebellion soon. In St. Petersburg, a strike by steel workers had... In 1905? That seems a bit early. Jeez. ...escalated, and plans were made for a mass demonstration. Oh no! Tens of thousands of protesters marched to the Winter Palace to present a petition to the Tsar, oh, asking cool. for better workers' rights and more political freedom. But instead, troops opened fire on the crowds, Jesus. killing more than 100. Bloody Sunday, as it became known, led to more strikes and unrest across the country. Rude. Rude. The, crew of the battleship Potemkin mutinied, killing their officers and taking control of the ship. To defuse the crisis, Nicholas II reluctantly issued the October Manifesto, drafted under the supervision of Sergei Vitter. It promised an elected assembly and new political rights, including freedom of speech, and was welcomed by most moderates. Good. Russia's first constitution was drafted the next year. 
Yay! For the first time, Sar Dang, that's would share power late. with an elected assembly, the State Duma. Though the Tsar had the right to veto its legislation and dissolve it at any time. Oh. Sergei Vitter finally lost the Tsar's confidence. And was dismissed. The Tsar's new Prime Minister, Stolipin, introduced land reforms to help the peasants. While dealing severely with Russia's would-be revolutionaries. So much so that the hangman's noose. Got a new nickname. Stolipin's necktie. Oh, jeez. But ha well, it seems like things are getting better for Russia, you know? Right, always nice. Having survived several attempts on his life, Stolipin was shot and killed by an assassin at the Kiev Opera House. Oh, gosh. Meanwhile, Grigory Rasputin, a Siberian... Oh, this guy, I, I always like, see his face. And hear his name, but I don't actually know who he is. Faith Healer had joined the Imperial Family's inner circle, thanks to his unique ability to ease the suffering of the Tsar's hemophiliac son, Alexei. Despite sporadic oh. acts of terrorism, Russia now had the fastest growing economy in Europe. Really? Wow, I thought that would have been like maybe Germany or Great Britain. That is crazy. Well, yeah, that. that, that... Uh, and the railway isn't even done yet. It's 1913, and it'll be done until three years later. Wow. Just imagine if World War I didn't happen. Russia would have probably been, like, one of the most powerful countries on Earth. Like, me. I don't know, like, me. Maybe, though, maybe the U.S. and Russia would get into conflict, just like they did in the Cold War, sort of. Who knows? But yeah, it's, I don't know. Just all these possibilities are interesting. That's just so hard to believe that Russia has the fastest growing economy in Europe. And they're seen as this really like a backward state. Agricultural and industrial output were on the rise. Most ordinary Russians remained loyal to the Tsar and his family. Russia's future seemed bright. Yeah, but one year later, bad, bad, bad stuff. World War I. In 1914, in Sarajevo, a Slav nationalist assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir oh, gosh. to the Austro-Hungarian throne, sparking a European crisis. When Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, Emperor Nicholas ordered the Russian army to mobilize, to show his support for a fellow Slav nation. Austria-Hungary's ally, Germany, saw Russian mobilization as a threat and declared war. Europe's network of alliances came into effect, and soon all the major powers were marching to war. World War I had yeah. begun. Russia experienced a wave of patriotic fervor that's good. The capital, St. Petersburg, was even renamed Petrograd. Yeah, because Petersburg sounds too German. It's so annoying. To sound less German. An early Russian advance into East Prussia. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. And ended with heavy defeats at Tannenberg and the Masurian Lakes. Yeah, they lost, like, I don't even know how much they lost. They lost... Basically, like an entire army. There was greater success against Austria Hungary, but that too came at a high price. Russian losses forced the army to make a general retreat in 1915. Yeah. Because of the German forces, not the Austria Hungary forces, did horribly. Like, they could, like, all of Galicia, like, all of Galicia was taken, basically. And the only reason why. You know, the Russians stopped us because of the Carpathian Mountains. It's ridiculous. Anyway, anyways. In 1916, Russia's Rusilov offensive against Austro-Hungarian forces was one of the most successful Allied attacks of the war. Yeah. 
but losses were so heavy that the Russian army was unable to launch any more major operations. Wow. And then the stupid Romanians joined. In Petrograd, Rasputin, whose alleged influence over the Tsar's family was despised by certain Russian aristocrats, was murdered, possibly with the help of British agents. Jeez. Revolution. Oh, gosh. The war put intolerable strains on Russia. At the front, losses were enormous, while in the cities, economic mismanagement led to rising prices and food shortages. In Petrograd, the workers' frustration led to strikes and demonstrations. Troops ordered to disperse the crowds refused and joined the protesters instead. Come on, dude. They had... They had... They had... You know, they gave them a form. Come on, guys. It looks... Oh, okay. This is not looking good for Russia. The government had lost control of the capital. On board the Imperial train, Scarf, senior politicians and generals told the Emperor he must abdicate, or Russia would descend into anarchy and lose the war. Dang. Nicholas accepted their advice, and renounced the throne in favor of his brother, Grand Duke Michael, who effectively declined the offer. Oh. No one. Four hundred years of Romanov rule were at an end. Russia was now a republic. A provisional government took power, but could not halt Russia's slide into economic and military chaos. Workers, soldiers and peasants elected their own councils, known as Soviets. The Petrograd Soviet was so powerful, it was effectively a rival government, Dang. especially as discontent with the provisional government continued to grow. The Bolsheviks, under Vladimir Lenin, attracted growing support with their radical proposals for an immediate end to the war. The re I also I have a fun fact for you guys. I think I already said this like a long time ago, but I'm gonna say it again. So like Soviet can also be like roughly translated into Union. So technically the Soviet Union is the Union so, yeah, that's pretty interesting. ...distribution of land and transfer of power to the Soviets. In October, they launched a coup, masterminded by Leon Trotsky. Bolshevik Red Guards stormed the Winter Palace, where the provisional government met, and arrested its members. Lenin and the Bolsheviks were now in charge. Russia had been thrown upon a bold and dangerous course. Under a Marxist-inspired revolutionary party, it would now seek to create the world's first communist state. Oh no. But first, it would have to survive the chaos and slaughter of one of history's bloodiest civil wars. Oh, here we go. Well, our there we go. That is it. That's it. The Shoe Brothers are five. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. You know what I mean? That's always nice, man. All the other sorts of stuff. Um. Yeah. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel and you know turn on the notification bell thingy and if you didn't then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down oh so, yeah that would be greatly appreciated and while you're at it go ahead and watch my other videos they're probably just as good at them if not better than this one right now except for my oldest videos don't watch those and you know subscribe to these people down here my fellow sergeants they're other YouTubers that I either know or I have 
I in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.